Um, my name is Joanne Collins Smee, and I'm so excited to see this sellout crowd uh, for the status on our Centers of Excellence and what we've been doing with USDA. So I'm going to explain the run of show because we have a full hour, 15 minutes of content. Um, now that we lost 20 minutes, we're going to go, go a bit quicker in terms of some of the areas, but we're also relieving time at the end for questions. So we're going to spend about 30 to 45 minutes at the beginning giving you an overview. Myself and Gary Washington and Matt Lira and Don Weiss uh, will talk to you about what we've been doing in the Centers of Excellence for the last six months. We stood in front of some of you probably in the South Auditorium over at the White House about six months ago. So it was the middle of December when we explained the Center of Excellence concept and what we were, how we were embarking on this program with the So, uh, and we're related to let's go to the next one. <laughs> So, my name is Joanne, as I mentioned, and I lead uh, TTS in GSA. The Centers of Excellence is a component of that team. And I mentioned that our first agency that we're working with is USDA. So, we have our two main clients, Don Weiss, who's the Assistant Secretary at USDA, and Gary Washington, who's the CIO. Wait, it's the Deputy Assistant Secretary. I'm sorry. I always get these type of that. Um, they are our key clients at USDA. So they are our partners in this activity. Um, and then Matt Lira from the Office of American Innovation is going to spend a few minutes with us. Matt is one of the thought leaders that actually, this was his concept, right, that has been mulling around in his head and others for a couple of years that we're now bringing to fruition here. Then um, our leader, our current leader every day at USDA for the Centers of Excellence, Bob DeLuca, will explain what we've been doing at USDA with the USDA team for the last uh, three months. If you think about the journey that we've been on at USDA, we actually spoke to you in December, in the middle of December. So during that six month period, the first three months were really spent getting leadership for each of the areas that we're focusing on. And let's go to the next term, please. Um, what our vision is, was, and still is, with the Centers of Excellence, is to actually consolidate great talent, use industry best practices, and handle some of those intractable technology problems that we have in the government that have been well studied, well analyzed, much discussed, our focus was how do we put the manpower and partner with industry to actually make progress on these areas. So let's go to the next chart on me. So these five areas, again, which had been much discussed before I arrived about 10 months ago, it was decided we were going to attack these five areas with the right talent and partner with firms to actually make progress at specific agencies. And there is a model which is embedding within the agency to get the best effect. We knew we had to start with one agency that we're all in with, and you're going to see when you talk to Gary and Don Weiss how incredible uh, the support has been from USDA, and one of the reasons we've been able to make progress is because of that leadership, quite frankly, at USDA. So in that journey, that six month journey, it was about how do we actually stand up these teams in each of the five areas. Two of them are related to classic infrastructure, so IT optimization, which is AKA data center consolidation, and the other is cloud adoption. Those are 
things that we've talked about in the government for years and years. So what we've done here, and you'll hear more of that, what we're doing is actually put expertise process and are partnering with industry to, to use what's been done in industry, pull that into the private sector. The next three COEs are all related to client experience. How does the citizen get services from the government? How can we really start with user-centered design to bring the best technology to bear to improve services for the citizens? And again, our team members will go through what we've been doing at USDA and what we're looking at for the next phase of the implementation. So in our journey, again, over the last six months, we built the leadership teams, the Fed leadership, for each of these areas, and that's a combination of USDA talent and leadership as well as talent and leadership in GSA, as well as let out a um, request for proposal for the first phase, which was the assessment phase. So uh, that was put out on the street, and four firms won that, and we're working very closely with those four firms for the last three months. So we actually stood up the Centers of Excellence in the beginning of April. So we have the Fed teams, the partnerships um, from outside industry, and we've been working through assessment, planning, and in some cases, execution, because USDA clearly had a modernization plan when we came. So in some instances, like data center, we met them where they were and were able to help uh, move even quicker. So as we go through each of the areas, we'll explain um, what we've done in partnership. But we're at a phase now, we're three months into the assessment phase. We'd always planned that this first phase, which was assessment and planning, would take about six months. Um, and we are planning to start the next phase of this project in the beginning of October. So that's why you're all here, because we want to talk to you about the next phase and discuss how we're going to proceed from here. So with that, I would like to hand it over to my great colleague, Don Weiss. Thanks, Don. All right, thank you, Joanne. Uh, first, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I see some familiar faces out there. Uh, I want to bring you uh, good afternoon and good tidings from the Secretary and tell you how committed he is to IT modernization and the reason why we're doing this. Um, his very first day at USDA, he came in the building, literally rolled up his sleeves and said he wanted to make USDA the most efficient, effective, most customer-centered organization in the federal government. And we quickly helped him map out how we could do that. And the main part of that is that we cannot continue to deliver our programs the same way we have been delivering them. We have to be ready for the next 150 years. USDA is 150 years old, by the way. Um, and we have to be, we expect to be around and to serve our customers for the next 150 years. We need to change how we do business. Because after all, it's really about the end customer. And that's something that the secretary is laser focused on. The reason we're doing these things, the reason why we're making changes, is to serve our customers better. And that's been our guiding principle. So we've got incredible leadership from the secretary, leadership from the deputy secretary. We have been very pleased with the partnerships that we've <coughs> developed with GSA and the Office of uh, American Innovation. We believe that it's, for us, being the Lighthouse Agency, we are very comfortable being the first agency or department in the pool. Um, you got to start somewhere. We, we certainly will make mistakes along the way, but we've been very pleased. And you know, the idea that we're the first is something that the secretary is also very tickled about. He wants to be an example for the rest of the departments out there. He wants to be an example. He did it when he was the governor of Georgia. He went from being 48th uh, in terms of management based on um, a lot of the, the management magazines out there to being in the top 10. So he knows what it takes to manage organizations, and IT is where he wanted to start, and IT is where we have started. So I just want to say uh, we're excited about the opportunity to, to start phase two. We're excited about uh, what we've seen from phase one. And also, as part of that leadership, it isn't just the secretary and the deputy. I'm very happy that Gary Washington decided 
uh, to accept my, my offer when we uh, looked for a CIO, both as the acting CIO and also when he became permanent. Because Gary is one of those people that took um, someone else's team and made it his team. He took someone else's um, outline of a plan and filled it out. You know, he's been able to strategically come in, find people's skills and talents, and put them in the right place. So I'm very happy that he's our leader here in the, the IT world. So with that, I was going to invite Gary to come up and talk to you a bit. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Don. So, um, somehow we had to organize ourselves to be able to take on this daunting task. So, as Joanne stated, there were things already going on. Uh, the Centers of Excellence had a framework to work, work by. So, what we decided to do was take that framework and set up a structure to govern and manage our activities moving forward. But we foresee uh, our approach going into phase two to allow us to have a structured and organized approach to success. So we have a program management office, and that office consists of myself, uh, the deputy CIO, Joanne, uh, and uh, we have a uh, IT modernization executive director, which is Toro Dean, and we have others that are part of that, that strategic team that meets on a weekly basis to assure that we're staying on task, we're not going out of scope, you know, we're spending our money wisely and doing the things that we're supposed to do. So with that, what we did was we took each center of excellence and we wanted to make sure that we had the right leadership and the right people had ownership of those centers of excellence. So we have a mission area sponsor. Uh, by the way, the mission area sponsors are some of the CIOs they became assistant CIOs for the mission area. We had 22 CIOs, and we went down to eight. So in each one of the centers of excellence, there is a chief information, information officer at USDA that owns that, that, that center of excellence. In addition to that, we have a COE team, a COE lead, which is composed of somebody from the center of excellence and another person from USDA. We had seven men and women very talented men and women that had the privilege of coming to work with us for two years, and they were half selected by their mission areas. Those people are, are helping us with these COEs. But the leadership, I'm sorry, the co-leads are the people that own those areas in OCIO along with the COE leads. In addition to that, it's like I spoke about the detailed leads are working with the COE teams. And what we expect is that over a period of time, because the COEs are not going to be in USDA forever. At some point, they are going to move on and probably take this out to other departments as a, as a proof of concept that a department can be modernized. So we expect these detail leads to become leaders in our future environment. Because this is an opportunity to also uh, give opportunities to our IT workforce and introduce them to new to new ways of doing things. So what we've done is we've done it across each each COE with the intention of making sure that you know we have again an organized structured approach to this. So our expectations in phase two is to completely modernize the Department of Agriculture in each one of these COEs with the solutions or technologies that are proposed in response to solicitations that will go out later on this summer. And uh, we're very excited about this. Um, there's a lot of opportunities in USDA for success, and I think so far we've proven that. Um, I get frequently asked about the relationship between OCIO, USDA, and the, uh, the Centers of Excellence. And if you, when you walk through USDA, you can't even tell who's a GSA employee versus a USDA employee. And that's how melted together and how quickly we came together to to work towards this common goal that we have. So it is very exciting, uh, we're very focused, and whoever is uh, has, has the opportunity to join us, uh, you know, there'll be high expectations from the secretary all the way down, and we're very proud of what we've accomplished so far. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Matt Lehrer of the Office of American Innovation. Thanks. 
Uh, well, first of all, thank you uh, everyone for being here today. Uh, it's so great to see the energy and, and excitement and interest in this important issue area. Um, you're, you're going to be hearing from uh, some of the team members later today that go more into the weeds, so I'll, I'll leave that to them. But uh, I want to touch upon a few points. Uh, the first is modernizing government services, modernizing government technology is a top level priority for this administration, um, all the way up to the president. Um, and uh, the effort by Secretary Purdue, uh, by Emily Murphy and their teams at USDA and GSA are a manifestation of that prioritization. Um, the, uh, so why is there that level of interest and in a problem that in the past anyway has been shuffled into the background? I think uh, the answer is pretty simple. Um, the interactions that everyday people have with government institutions shape their perceptions of those institutions and of our government writ large. Uh, we believe very strongly that whether it's a veteran seeking care, a farmer or a rancher seeking assistance from USDA, or any other number of case studies, uh, that there's no reason why they shouldn't have best-in-class service uh, equivalent to those services that they receive uh, from the private sector. Uh, and to that end, uh, last year we convened uh, multiple times, but most notably we convened uh, technology leaders from across the country uh, to spend uh, discussions about this very issue. And the approach uh, was remarkably consistent. Uh, whether you are a technology provider, just normally kind of consistent with the government, or whether you're a technology company that never done business with the government, uh, the answer was remarkably the same, and it was manifested in this center of excellence model, which is to say, build partnerships with with agencies that are interested in driving the transformation, and let that serve as a model uh, for agencies going forward. And USDA is the perfect lighthouse agency. Uh, so one point I want to stress today is in addition to helping modernize USDA with the fantastic team, this will serve as a model for modernizing other agencies. And I can assure you they're actually clamoring at the door to get into this project um, for how to take an agency uh, into modern systems. And so uh, there's an enormous amount of interest and support in, uh, in, in, uh, in helping that come to pass. Another point that I want to stress is that this is really about collaboration and partnerships. Um, this is not a model where people kick in the door and say, y'all have been doing this wrong and we know everything. It's a model about how do we work together to get things done in the line and sentence, to bring the best of public servants, to bring the best of the private sector, working together uh, to achieve these outcomes over a long-term basis um, with very meaningful short-term deliverables. And I think that model um, has been working remarkably well. Uh, over the first phase of the COE, as Gary indicated, when you walk through the halls of USDA, um, it's very easy to see that this is a team working together uh, to achieve an outcome, but involves stakeholders from, from various different communities that haven't historically gotten a lot of work together. Uh, and so we're very excited about that spirit and that culture continuing as we dive into phase two. Um, and lastly, I want to say that this is a, a tremendous opportunity, I think, for the country uh, to show that we're capable and worthy of the public's faith. Um, when people experience decades-old services, um, they are rightfully frustrated with the government behind those services. And I believe very strongly that it is time for that to change, um, and that in a way that perhaps not, not everyone can appreciate on the first glance of a technology project, we are ultimately in the business of restoring the public's faith in these institutions themselves. Um, and so I'm tremendously excited uh, to have uh, the interest of this community. Uh, and I think that hopefully what we'll find as these contracts go out and as decisions get made, uh, that the very best of our country is brought forward uh, to work on a challenge as important as that one. Um, and so uh, with that, I'll hand it over to people who actually are doing most of the work every day, uh, Bob and the team. So thank you. Okay, thanks, Matt. That's excellent. I appreciate all the speakers that have come before me, but what I'm going to try to do at this point is make a pivot from the strategic concepts down to more of an operational concept. Um, 
It wasn't that long ago that I sat in auditoriums just like this as a contractor trying to understand what the guy at the podium was trying to procure. So what I'm hopeful we can do for the next portion of this presentation is to kind of get through that and give you an understanding, maybe some context as far as um, what it is that we're looking to do in phase two. So if we look briefly at this roadmap chart here, if my arm's long enough, I put my finger on 3.2. That's kind of where we are right now. Okay, we're, we have uh, work with the phase one vendors. So as Joanne mentioned, the phase one folks are in here, our, our team is established, and we're trying to get our hands around the discovery and the analysis of where we are today with USDA and the COEs and figure out what those new procurements are going to be in the phase two that Gary mentioned. Okay, We are in the preparing for acquisition stage and completing the definition of the future state. Um, so this so what I'm going to do now is provide a little bit of context as far as what we've accomplished in the past three months here. So hopefully that this information can can give you some uh, insight into what we've been doing to help make your bids potentially more appropriate for what we're asking in phase two. Um, I want to make sure that we're using the time that we have today, this two hour period, to communicate effectively with you about what our plans are. We're even spending another two days tomorrow and Friday to, to talk to you even more, to solicit additional feedback. This is a huge investment of our time, and we think it's worth it. We want to make sure that we're able to communicate effectively with you to, to really get our message across so that you can contribute to our efforts in the future. So with respect to the first area, the infrastructure optimization, uh, UCA had a plan to close 39 data centers in two years. So 18 and 18 and 19 and 19, and for a guy like me, that's very easy to remember, so that's good. What we've done is with our team partnering with them is help them accelerate that, okay? We've closed 20 so far, and I think there's a couple more on the way, so we're, we're really exceeding that target as far as closing the data centers. But once you close the data center, there needs to be somewhat of a, you can't just close it, right? Why are we closing it? There's the house chart here on the side here is explaining all the benefits as to why we would do that. And there's potentially 40 people in this room that could read this chart better than I can. But there, there's good reasons for shutting down data centers for cost savings, for increased security, better performance, better utilization, uh, reduction of duplication. Those are all the reasons. And we're building this model to help uh, the USDA OCIO group uh, understand why this is a, why they're and communicate more effectively with why they're doing this. Okay. The other thing we're trying to do is once you shut this data center down. You have a bunch of applications that used to run in that data center, so what are you going to do with it? So we've helped them work on an application rationalization process. That process defines the landing zone, the most appropriate place to put those applications. Okay? And then when you shut that down a data center, you move stuff to other data centers, and you have to work on all the networking, the speeds and feeds, to make sure that the connectivity works, that the latency is proper, and all the other technical aspects of that. And as uh, USDA migrates away from the network contract, uh, we're helping them migrate into the EIS contract. Okay. The second center is cloud adoption. Okay, so one of the things we've helped uh, with USDA is to help define an appropriate role for a group. They're calling CPS, Cloud Platform Services. Okay, now that group, the prior to the prior to this team working together, if you want to go to the cloud at USDA, you had to go through a different group and it became a little bit difficult for a user or a, a technical person to figure out you know, who they should talk to in order to get something to the cloud. So the CPS group is going to be a peer organization, or is actually now a peer organization with the infrastructure group, so that there is a viable one-stop shop for folks to get to the cloud. The other thing that makes it difficult to get to the cloud is an ATO, an authority to operate. Uh, we've worked with the CISO staff and the CIO staff to help create an accelerated ATO process to use uh, the good parts of what's going on at USDA with the good parts of FedRAMP in order to make that process a little bit easier, make it less costly, make it take a little bit shorter of a time period. Okay. And one of the big things we did, not sure why it's last, is created a uh, 1100 app inventory. We, we reached our hands very wide and tried to understand all the applications that USDA is using on a regular basis, and it's just over 1100 applications. Uh, using that same um, application rationalization process developed in the other COE, uh, we're trying to understand which applications are cloud ready. And of the ones that are cloud ready, our goal is to take and prioritize the top 100 and then use that for uh, our work in phase two when this thing comes around to the next part of the contract. Okay. Customer experience is our third area. Um, 
from the, this chart here, we're trying to show that uh, on the map, there's been a lot of travel. Um, I see the bills, there's a lot of travel. <laughs> they've been to six locations, they've done over 80 interviews with stakeholders, farmers, producers, ranchers, loan officers within uh, the Department of Agriculture. And what they're trying to do is create a user-centered user -centered design methodology to create a visualization of the process from the awareness of the loans all the way through final payout. Okay, and then this journey map becomes a input into a co-creation process for future development. Um, it's the best one I've ever seen. I've worked in IT for 22 years, and this, the, the way that this group has come together to put this together, this is printed out in, in uh, size 10 font, and it's 12 feet long. It's only a portion of it. it it's amazing, and the group has really come together to do an awesome job of this. Okay, the other thing that they've done, and we haven't mentioned it yet, is uh, USDA is creating a, a Chief Customer Experience Officer, and I think I saw him in the room, Joe Doyle, over there. Um, they're setting up a, there he is, uh, they're setting up a, a customer experience office. And with that, uh, Sucus Group has been helping to work with the customer experience champions and to help sort of get that group off its feet, or onto its feet, sorry, and uh, to, get, to get things started over there. So it's been, it's been really good, a really good experience working with them. Okay, data analytics. I think you saw on Don's slide, um, slide six or so, don't go back. Uh, it was something where uh, the secretary explains he wants to take a data-based approach to making decisions, which is great. Everyone should do that. Uh, but we're thankful that USDA is embracing that from the top level all the way down. And that's what this group is designed to do here. Um, they're reaching out into the mission areas. Uh, they're talking to uh, the business users there and trying to understand what the proper KPIs are, what the proper data elements are that they're capturing. UCA captures an enormous amount of data. Uh, what this group has tried to do and has been very successful in doing a uh, minimum viable product here, a series of these things, to try to produce dashboards to, to collect all that data and present it in a manner that is compelling. Uh, this slide here, the, the picture slide, is a mock-up of what the Farm Service Agency has been working on. And it's basically all their programs on one sheet to talk about what groups uh, in, like, the state of uh, Arkansas, I guess, has been uh, have been addressed, right? So it, it, it talks about race, ethnicity, gender, the, the program itself. And just from a visual snapshot of that, you can see where the message has been getting, has gotten out to, and maybe where we need to emphasize the message in a different manner. So this is a, it's been a great, great, great effort right here. The last one. Okay, and the last piece here is contact center. And in much the same way that the cloud group reached out and wrapped their arms around all the applications that USDA is using, the contact center group has been doing inventory of all the ways in which uh, U.S. citizens touch the USDA. They've done surveys. They've done some investigations on their own. They've they've reached out to all the business groups that they've been able to, to touch so far, and they've created an inventory. And once they had that inventory, that's when they started doing research to see how many of these contact centers can only take phone calls. How many of these contact centers are only sending postal mail? Um, are they sharing information back and forth? So with this research, they've put together uh, a plan for how they're going to address this in the future. Okay, And they're also, in, in the process of this, creating a journey map very similar to the one you saw for customer experience. But it's for the journey of how a, a U.S. citizen reaches in and grabs information from USDA to make sure that it's repeatable and make sure that when a question is asked in one area of the country, they get the same answer as they would from a different part of the country. Okay. And that's brief. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. I know we're a little bit late on time. But uh, after me is going to be Al Munoz to talk. We're going to talk a little bit more tactically about the contracting portion of this. But I, before I do leave the stage, I, I do want to make sure you understand that I'm looking to get uh, a lot from you. Uh, I, I want to make sure that we have a very difficult decision in September when we have to look at all your bids and evaluate them. Uh, if I get bids back that are $1 million and $50 million for the same piece of work, I've failed you on the stage right now. So I want to make sure that over today and the next two days that we're, we're able to get, or we're able to give and get from you. Okay. With that, I'll pass it down. Okay, hi. Uh, as Bob said, I'm Al Munoz. I'm the contracting officer for the Centers of Excellence Effort. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to briefly go over the timeline for what the procurements are going to look like 
Uh, and before I go too far, I, I've seen a lot of you take pictures of the slides. We are going to put the slides up on our website so that you can have them, so you don't have to kind of scroll up and look at the tiny print. Um, so you'll be able to scroll and look at the tiny print online. Um, so, uh, as Joanne was saying, six months ago we did an industry day for phase one, and we laid out where our timeline was going to be, and, and we generally met that timeline. Uh, it got the, the initial phase out there to do the analysis, and now we're at the point where we've gone through exactly what you would expect us to go through for any type of solicitation that you're going to see on this street. We've done our due diligence, we've, we've looked at the hood at USDA, and we found some things that we made recommendations to USDA, and now we're going to go implement those uh, recommendations by way of scopes of work that we're going to be asking for your input on. What I'd like to say about those scopes of work is that everything is still very tentative. Um, typically, when you come to an industry day, a lot of the requirements are very solid at that point, and maybe we're just going to tweak around the edges a little bit based on industry input. And that's absolutely not what we're trying to do here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do when the leads come up here is they're going to tell you why, right? What they've discovered poking around under the hood at USDA and kind of what we, what we think uh, we need to, uh, to acquire in order to address those concerns that we found poking around. Um, but uh, we definitely want your input on that, right? There's there's a number of channels that you can reach us to provide input with us. Uh, we'll go over those uh, by the end of the program here today, and I can do it right now. Um, but uh, we want to hear from your input. We want to hear what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right. Uh, vehicles we're using are the right ones, they're the wrong ones. We've forgotten something, we didn't think of something. <clears throat> we want to hear from you. We want to incorporate all of that stuff into the requirements that we're going to start talking about here in just a second. Uh, but uh, it, it, uh, the timeline is as far as what you're going to see coming out over the summer months. Uh, we think that our solicitations are going to start coming out uh, in July. So about a, over the next month or so, you're going to start seeing solicitations hit the street. Uh, you'll see the, the normal amount of communication. You'll see some on FedBizOps. You'll see some on eBuy. Uh, we'll communicate that as much as we can out on our website. We're going to have a GitHub repo that you can post questions and we can answer so that everybody can see what's going on there. Um, and uh, the solicitations, they'll be out for as long as we can possibly get them out. Uh, we, we have a shortened timeline, of course, because we're bumping up against fourth quarter and the end of the fiscal year. Uh, but we're going to give you as much time as we can to respond. We need to incorporate your feedback. We need to, of course, evaluate and get awards done by the end of September. So uh, we're going to be moving uh, very, very quickly. We're going to have uh, parallel paths. We're not going to hold anything waiting for some other solicitation to go out. So you're going to see this stuff all come out. Uh, relatively simultaneously, uh, pick and choose the things that you want to respond to, uh, and please provide us a, a, the most valuable feedback that you can possibly provide. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to have the leads start coming up, and uh, they're going to tell you a little bit about what we found, and then they're going to talk a little bit about the scope of the work. Uh, when they're done, uh, I'll come back up and we'll start talking about the vehicles that we think we're going to be advertising these uh, solicitations on. Uh, again, this is very tentative. We want your feedback. Uh, talk to us. Let us know about uh, how this looks to you uh, and what we might be able to do to improve these as we go along. So I'll be back in just a few. Uh, for now, I'm going to have the, the lead start coming up and start talking to you about their solicitation. <coughs> Hey, I'm Jake Uri. I'm the lead for the Cloud Options Center of Excellence. Dan Pomeroy couldn't be here, but he's the lead for the infrastructure organization. So I think some of you might be wondering how distinct are they. I think we see them as distinct and both important but very related. And Dan has been amazing in trying to work with me. Um, so from a data center perspective, we were fortunate to walk into, as alluded to before, you know, a lot of focus in the mandate. So 39 data centers, 18 and 18. 19 and 19. Um, Dan and his team have closed 20 working with USDA, right? As Joanne said, we hit them in stride, right? A lot of momentum. We didn't try to slow that down. So we've been, in fact, been able to accelerate that a lot. So what remains are those 17, sorry, my math is bad. We slept two more, uh, the two enterprise data centers that we'll be moving to, right? So when you think about cloud, know that there's that infrastructure optimization piece that's there as well. So I think I really like the analogy about rolling up the sleeves. And I think um, when we were prepping yesterday, Joanne said, you know, this is a team of uh, people in the room of, of leaders, right? I know from, I've been in industry on that side of the fence too, right? So I know the expertise that's out there. I think Joanne would also want me to encourage to tell you, we need a team of doers, right? Rolling up your sleeves. Movement to cloud is not about writing a cloud strategy and sort of hoping it has an effect. I can point to Gary and say that's already had an effect, right? He's bought in, you heard from Don Weiss, all the way up the chain. So what we need is the mechanism of doing. 
um, alluded to the thousand plus applications that we think we have. Not all of those are going to go to the cloud, certainly not all at once. Matt Lear has been um, quoted as saying, you know, modernization is a relay race, right? The PMA cites generational transformation. I think we're familiar with the effort that takes. And many of you have probably seen this inside agencies, right? So now we've got the strategy, now it's the mechanism of taking action. And so rather than try and hold up, you know, some of the migrations to try and get this perfect inventory, right? We want to try and prioritize. And so Bob alluded to sort of the key 100 applications. We're working with each of the mission agencies to try and identify what those are in this current evaluation phase. We're about more than halfway through, I'd say. And so try and find the sort of key 100. And the key can be, are they cloud ready? Right? What's the number of users they're going to affect? Are those internal users versus external users? Back to Matt's point, we want, really want to try and prioritize that mission change. So, that's kind of the landscape that we're at. And then in terms of your input, what we'd like to know is the best way of achieving that. I know sometimes in the past you hear about cloud strategies and it's sort of all in on one cloud. And it's not my belief, I don't believe it's your SDA's belief either, that, that it's sort of a mandate-driven activity. Right? I think cloud is a mission-driven activity. Right? Different missions in USDA, and it's diverse as you heard before, need different clouds fundamentally. So what we've been talking about is those different landing zones. That's the term inside USDA, right? Platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software. Maybe there's multiple platforms. Maybe there's multiple software type activities, right? That sort of breakdown, I think, is going to be the biggest piece. Oh, there. there that, um, that we mentioned before about your all's input about how to kind of unitize that. What does it look like to migrate a large application or a medium application or a small application, right? What, what happens when you find out that there are application dependencies across these pieces? That's really what we'd like from you. So cloud is definitely an IT transformation activity. I love the infrastructure stuff behind the walls, but I want to make sure you all understand we believe it's very much tied to this mission outcome. It's not a mandate OCIO driven. It's very much in response to the opportunities it presents to accelerate the mission. I'm going to All right. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to contact centers. Thank you. Hi, I'm Megan Daly, VV for the Contact Center COE. We know that there are many wonderful programs within USDA. I think at last count, around 400 different programs um, that support the farmers, the ranchers, the producers, the foresters, and the consumers. Um, however, that current customer experience is really fragmented across those areas. And we want, um, we know in the contact center space, there's numerous, num numerous numbers to call. Um, there's a lack of a consistent customer experience across that area, uh, across those areas. Um, there's limited contact um, channels. Right now it's really just phone, postal mail, and some email. We also know that there's really few opportunities to provide that real-time feedback on how that customer experience was. And as well, um, we know that they get they receive inconsistent answers depending on what channel they, they contact USDA. So we really want to improve this experience. And our COE is making various recommendations. We want to develop an enterprise-wide um, integrated knowledge management system. So this is this way that um, whoever contacts USDA gets that same answer regardless of the channel they contact USDA. We also want to create a cloud-based front door contact center so that consumers have one number to call. And this will also um, this increases this will increase and enhance that customer experience. But also from an efficiency perspective, um, the folks that are the senior folks that are answering those tier one calls can now really focus. Um, you know, by having this front door handle those calls, they can really focus on the best and, and more complicated work at USDA. The third piece that we're recommending is really um, leveraging the emerging technologies that exist. So via um, virtual intelligent tools robotic process automation so that um, those mundane paper-based pro um, processes can be improved. Yeah. And really we want to make sure that those periodic tests and learn for those emerging technologies happen throughout that contract. And lastly, this is obviously going to involve a lot of change, so we want to make sure there's a, um, a change management um, program in collaboration with USDA on that. Next slide. So all in all, in summary, we really want to make sure that USDA is on par with, um, with the, the contact center space that's in the private sector. They expect that, and really, we want USDA to get there. I think that's all. Thank you. Hello, 
everybody. I'm Tom Halloran. I'm the Data Analytics COE lead. Thanks for being here today. Um, so over the past three months, we've really had a journey at USCA. Uh, we've met with um, leaders from uh, some of the over some of the eight mission areas and over 400 programs, 18 agencies. Uh, and one of the key findings for us is that uh, USCA is really big. Um, so across. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, across all of those across all of those different uh, those those programs, uh, there are uh, there are efforts uh, that coordinate uh, one of the largest lending institutions in the country, uh, the most popular uh, federal website, Recreation.gov, and of course all of the services that farmers and uh, ranchers use uh, to to make their businesses work, from insurance to um, to certification uh, to uh, marketing assistance, right? So. Uh, Obviously, data and analytics play a huge role when it comes to all of these different activities. And, uh, um, and so uh, I, I think, uh, unlike some of the other COEs that you've heard from and you will hear from, our mission is actually pretty, the mission of the data and analytics COE is, is a little more uh, amorphous, uh, very important. And, um, uh, and, uh, and so our, our initial task here, the discovery, has been um, uh, very intense in terms of trying to figure out uh, how we can uh, encourage uh, um, uh, modernization of data analytics across all of these different uh, diverse activities. And so uh, one person who's been critical uh, in that, um, in helping us navigate this is, is Ted Kauf, uh, the chief of staff for the USDA CIO, uh, and uh, he's here today. Uh, and and another, um, another person who's been really critical in helping us with that is uh, one of our core um, uh, uh, deliverables has been to help the USDA uh, become a more customer-centric organization. And so the, the new uh, USDA Customer Experience Office headed by Joe Doyle has also helped to structure our engagement a little bit. So out of this discovery process, we have, we've, we've started to develop these different kinds of letters of engagement with USDA agencies that are going to define the work that gets done uh, in, the next procure, in this coming procurement. Um, and, uh, and what we've done is we've uh, identified uh, two procurements that we're going to be moving, that we're hopefully going to be moving forward with, and, and we want to hear your feedback. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from a lot of you during the reverse industry days that are coming up. So the first is, um, <clears throat> uh, you want to go to the next slide, actually? Next slide. Uh, yeah, so the first is data uh, visualization analytics. So this is really tool building. Uh, so coming up with, um, uh, in response to some of these uh, SOWs that we've sketched out, uh, coming up with tools that, are, that help mission areas deliver on strategic goals. Uh, and uh, and the, the set of tools that, that we're looking for uh, vendors to come to us with, with expertise in and ideas about our dashboards, predictive analytics, uh, advanced geospatial analytics, um, and anything around uh, data and analytics uh, that you think uh, is going to help the USDA deliver on. Uh, the strategic goals of the secretary, uh, and uh, and we have some of that. Obviously, most of you are going to be familiar or already familiar with our SOW, um, and we've outlined some of those technologies in, in that document. And then the next uh, procurement is is really um, uh, soft skill heavy. So we're looking for a, a vendor, and that's why we broke it up this way. We're looking for a vendor who can who can help ensure that uh, that what is procured um, in terms of tools and uh, uh, databases and all of the different um, uh, uh, new product that we hopefully are going to bring to USDA, that, that those are going to be utilized in the most effective way possible. Uh, and the way to do that is to provide capacity building and change management expertise within the organization. And that's not, we're not looking for someone to come in and, as Jay said, uh, or maybe it was Joanne, but break down the door and, uh, and tell USDA how to, how to do something. It's working very closely with USDA, which uses data right now in a, a very comprehensive and, uh, um, and uh, uh, with, with lots of domain expertise, um, but to, to help them leverage even better tools and, uh, and take advantage of processes that are already underway uh, to make USDA um, the foremost data-driven organization in the federal government. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Sumka uh, Subeki Bogan. I lead the Customer Experience Center of Excellence. Um, we've had a fantastic time partnering with USDA. We've had a great relationship with Gary's office, with the CIO, uh, also a great relationship with the Customer Experience Office at USDA with Joe Doyle. Um, 
We have been very busy in the past three months. Um, been spending all the travel budget <laughs> on talking to customers, um, really getting a sense of customers' needs, um, diving deep with a lot of the field staff. I would say 90% plus of the workforce is spread out across the country. So in order to get a good representation and hear the voices from across uh, the United States uh, that represent USDA, the workforce, but also the customers, we really had to get out there and hear them uh, firsthand. Um, with this first phase of work, we've been, of course, incorporating a lot of human-centered design approaches. That's really kind of the heart of how we're approaching this work. Um, and because we're under this IT modernization umbrella of work, um, we really wanted to see how we can marry the two. So a lot of phase one um, was doing a lot of um, focusing on a certain area. One of the areas we focused uh, really deeply on was a mission area called the Farm Production and Conservation. Um, where they do a lot of, they own a lot of service centers across the country. Uh, they do different services such as farm loans, give farms, uh, farm loans to uh, farmers, ranchers, producers to start up their, their farm production um, so that they can have as much yield as possible. Um, one of the areas that we found when we were doing some of this research was co collaboration, communication. So this is really amongst the employees across USDA. Um, so for one example is a farm loan officer. The only usual time they get to engage with other, other like farm loan officers in their state is when they have maybe an event, a conference, so they can get together and collaborate. Um, there is functionality today in USDA to do one-on-one -on -one chats, you know, from wherever you are. I think we're looking uh, and recommending potentially a a solution that, or a tool that could really um, emphasize that team building, that culture. Um, a lot of uh, field service offices work in unique ways um, between offices, and if there is an opportunity to share best practices amongst each other, uh, do continuous best practices and collaborate in a more efficient way, we think there's a lot of um, potential for that to happen um, so that people in like um, positions across USDA can collaborate with each other um, and so on and so forth regarding different topics that may come up. Next slide. Um, oh, yes. uh, so one other area, and this came up um, with a lot of the um, agile development that's happening across USDA. There's a lot of building, there's a lot of developing, of new and improved services. So you've heard uh, a lot of talk about farmers.gov and all of the things that are going to come out of that work. And we're really excited um, to be part of that. Um, but before you know, a lot of development happened, we really wanted to take a pause. And you know, if we were going to focus on farm loans, we didn't want you know, the, the train to go and, and for development to happen without really understanding the needs of the customers. Um, there was some initial work happening um, with respect to going out to the farms, talking to farmers about their needs. Um, we wanted to take it another step, uh, another step forward and really um, focus on getting more insights, more in-depth analysis about what could be developed in the future. And I think moving forward, when we think about human-centered design and agile practices, we wanted to think about creative ways of marrying the two. How do you do this type of work up front, but then continue the work throughout development? So that kind of marriage between human-centered design, discovery, but then how do you continue it so that uh, throughout the build, as you continue to do sprints, as you continue to do all of this work um, along the way, how are you continuing to put customer experience at the forefront and balancing that with developing um, quickly for the customer? So, so one of the um, one of the objectives here is is looking for talent really for the CX PMO. Uh, we want really great CX strategists, we want really great CX analysts, we want them to have um, to have had experience working in an agile environment, but how do you kind of bring those two specialties together in a really successful way? And that's what we're trying to do here with this CX PMO. Uh, 
Uh, the other area we're really excited about, and this is one where we've also been working closely with uh, the customer experience office, is uh, currently um, that office has uh, nominated across the department, so they have about 17 sub-agencies that represent USDA today, so if you can imagine the enormous workforce that goes with that. Uh, they've nominated uh, customer experience champions, and part of their mission is really to create and come up with customer experience improvement plans um, over the next year. Um, and one of the ways in which we're supporting them, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about their plans, we're doing workshops with them and things like that, um, but we also wanted to give them a mechanism, some type of tool to help, you know, bring all of this input together. And so when we think about all of the delivery channels that agencies have today, from contact centers to web forms, uh, email, in-person surveys. So if you think about all of those channels, they live in disparate places across programs, across an agency. Um, so if you are you know, tasked to be that customer experience champion, how do you bring all of that information <laughs> together? Um, and so that's what we're trying to do here with this voice of the customer. So um, there are possible solutions out there that could maybe bring all of this information together, also help agencies and programs who currently don't have survey mechanisms or a variety of outlets to ask customers their opinion about X, Y, and Z, um, to also have the capability to do that as well. Um, so that's what we're looking for with the Voice of the Customer program. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Whitaker. I'm part of the uh, CWE PMO. Next slide. All right. So, what I have to say today isn't nearly as exciting as uh, anything else briefed by our CWE leads. We're not flying to Kansas City or Oklahoma, eating their barbecue or anything like that. Um, we're not IT subject matter experts, but we're here really to collaborate with USDA to really enable. Um, our leads to create change and uh, do what they need to do. We really want to um, get in front of any sort of obstacles to create specific processes so that they don't have to worry about overrunning the travel budget, so that they know who to talk to in terms of a chief experience officer uh, to get their voice of the customer program off the ground. Um, a couple of the things that we've learned with our short time here at USDA is that we have a really good relationship with CIOs and we need to even form a better relationship with uh, USDA's business owners so that we can really provide uh, not just the business value of IT, but we, we really need to work with those business partners to understand why we're moving applications to the cloud, just not for the sake of doing IT. Um, a couple of the other things that we actually identified while we were here is that uh, there's a, a lot of, I don't want to say administrative, but there's a lot of back-end work that really needs to go on. Um, the monthly contractor bills need to get paid. Uh, the travel budget needs to be managed. Uh, uh, different resources need to be found to address any sort of skill gaps or, um, let's say, workload gaps that arise within the CME. So this is a lot of the stuff that Bob and I really kept our eyes on the ball with. Um, in terms of recommendations, we definitely want to create a center of excellence came up. Uh, you've often heard through different speaking engagements and uh, some of the folks that have spoken up here that. We plan on taking this model from one agency to the next, and to be able to scale, we're going to really need some PMO support to do that successfully. Next slide. So, as I mentioned, um, PMO scope of work, right? We really want to get some folks uh, inside USDA to help us really manage and oversee what's going on in phase two of this implementation. We're going to have a lot of projects that are going to be uh, rolled out, whether in an agile fashion or waterfall, we're going to make sure, we're going to support our CUE leads to ensure that each of these uh, projects are successful. So with that said, uh, to give you some more details about the different procurements, Al, and we're meeting. Thank you. Okay, so we'll, as you saw on the bottom of each one of those slides that the leads had up about their scopes of work, there were some potential strategies there that we are considering for advertising each one of these procurements. And on this slide, which again we'll post up on our website, um, 
these are the different procurements here and the potential strategies that we're thinking right at the moment. I'll go through them very quickly. Uh, I know we've thrown a lot of material at you in a very short period of time today. Uh, we do have time for Q&A. We, we, thankfully for the leads, they, they were able to move through their material very quickly. Uh, so we'll have some time to answer some of your questions today. And again, uh, in just a moment, I'll give you some places where you can uh, interact with us starting immediately. Um, so for the cloud adoption COE right now, what you heard from Jay was that there's a lot of apps that need to be migrated. Um, in order to do that in some type of intelligent fashion, we're not continuing to uh, move apps over a very long extended period of time. Uh, we're thinking of doing multiple award BPA using Schedule 7. Now, that's just based on our experience so far doing this type of work elsewhere in GSA. Uh, that's where we think that's going to happen. We want your feedback again on all every single one of these. Uh, for the IT infrastructure optimization COE, as Jay said, that work is very closely tied to the cloud, and we think that's going to be wrapped together into a single procurement. So both of those together, both of those COEs together will be a single, or I should say a multiple award BPA. Uh, so we'll have multiple vendors in there working together to move as many apps as we can in a, in a very short period of time. For the contact center COE, uh, what we're thinking is a single award using open market. Uh, we would prefer to use GSA vehicles to the greatest extent possible. It doesn't look like we're finding a very good fit right now. Uh, again, we want to hear your feedback on that. If you think otherwise and you'd like to show us something about that, we'd certainly like to hear about that. Uh, for data and analytics, analytics COE, for the data visualization and analytics, uh, single award using Schedule 7, the Alliant, you see the little star there, that means but when I say Alliant, that means Alliant, Alliant 2, it means Alliant Small Business, right? Somebody's about to ask me that question. Um, <laughs> so Alliant, or that's 2. Um, what we did, and I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier, what we did is we had some senior folks around GSA get together in a room and go through these initial scopes of work and, and take a look and see where they might best fit within existing GSA vehicles. And these are the results of, of that effort, but again, we're not done yet. We're, we're, we're waiting for that uh, for that last piece and that's your input. Uh, for the data analytics capacity building, a single award using Schedule 70 or possibly PSS. For customer experience collaboration, uh, again, single award using Schedule 70, Alliant with the star, uh, or possibly BETS2. For the PMO, uh, that looks like it might be Schedule 70. We're leaning a little bit, I will be honest with you, toward PSS right at the moment. Uh, that's where we've had success in the past, but we can see that it also will fit under Schedule 70, so that might be a, uh, a dual advertisement. There's uh, advertisement under both. For voice of the customer, we're thinking single award using Alliant again, or Schedule 70. And for the PMO, again, um, the same thing with the customer experience, uh, COE PMO, we're thinking of single award using Schedule 7 or PSS. And what should have been updated on this slide, and this is my fault, I apologize, is uh, there's a possibility that those PMOs will end up being BPAs, uh, and it's a possibility that they may be multiple award BPAs, and that's something that we will get into with you, uh, of course, over the next several weeks. Okay, and here are the different ways that you can reach us. Um, Okay, here's one of them. Um, <laughs> you can also email us. Uh, what we would prefer is that you go onto our GitHub site. Again, you can click this link on the slide or you can type it in right now in your browser and go to our GitHub and post your question as an issue on our GitHub repo. Uh, what will happen when you do that is that everyone will get to see your question uh, and we'll answer it so everyone can see both the question and the answer. And what we're going to try and do is get those answers back to you within 24 hours. Uh, the weekends notwithstanding, if you put a question in on Monday, we're going to try and get you an answer by Tuesday, and everyone will be able to see both the question that was asked by you and the answer that we provided. Um, reverse industry days are tomorrow. Uh, there are other channels that you probably are already well familiar with. My email address is out there. You can also send me an email. I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to answer your email. I'm going to put it up on the GitHub, and we're going to answer it that way, right, so that everyone can see the question and the answer. Um, Reverse Industry Day uh, starts tomorrow. If you were fortunate enough to get one of those slots, we know that uh, those were extraordinarily popular and they filled up almost immediately if you were on vacation. I apologize, you probably didn't get in. Uh, we did add a number of additional slots, and thanks to this gentleman sitting here behind the column, uh, Ovi Gifar and my COR, uh, you're both sitting here in this room, and you're going to get a chance to get in to see us uh, tomorrow or Friday for a one-on-one -on -one session with us. Look for an email from that same gentleman, Omid Gifari. If you haven't met him yet, please come up and shake his hand before you leave. Um, and uh, he has given you some instructions about tomorrow, specifics about what the rules are. 
You're going to have a very brief time with us, right? We have a lot of you to get in and out. That doesn't mean that's the end of the conversation. Come in, tell us what your capabilities are, tell us what we, we didn't think of, tell us you know whatever it is that you can tell us that you think will be valuable in, in terms of developing the solicitations, uh, but continue that conversation with us. We keep going back to the GitHub repo, respond. If we start to put out RFIs, respond. If we start putting out draft solicitations, which we, we definitely intend to do, and give us your feedback as much as possible and get that back into us so we can use it in developing our solicitations. Um, please arrive a little bit early tomorrow for your appointment at GSA. It's going to be in the other building, which is Central Office, which is a great center at 18th and F. Uh, come in on the F Street side and uh, try to be there a little bit early. As you can see, security can be kind of a mess for a, a crowd this size. Uh, and we will get you to the, the right room. We'll get you in front of uh, these folks over here, and you'll get a chance to uh, have a discussion with them. Um, okay. And with that, we're going to start taking your questions, and we'll start giving some answers. Not, not just yet. Uh, we're going to bring everybody up here on stage, and then we'll start taking your questions. And uh, we'll start having some microphones come around also so that uh, everyone can hear it. Uh, this has been live streamed. It, will be re it was recorded. We're going to post it up on the COE website as well. Uh, we're going to stop the recording right now, though, and we'll get those questions and answers posted up on our site, the questions that you asked today. And we'll, we'll get all that stuff up there so you can refer back to it. Thank you.